Hello amazing people, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Anyango Brand Show and I'm here with an amazing lady, amazing, amazing guest. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Mm -hmm. My name is Frida Midoni Kazoya, mm -hmm. a fourth year, taking mathematics and business studies. Wow, you're taking mathematics. Yeah. I fear you and I was here, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Mm, I'm Spencer Brandy. Yeah. Welcome to my show. Uh, today mm -hmm. I wanted us to talk about motherhood in school, being a mother in school, you know, it comes with a lot of things, it comes with a lot of challenges, things mm -hmm. that you go through as a mother, but first of all, tell me, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How is your little angel? She's <laughs> wonderful, I'm mm -hmm. a mother of one, mm -hmm. a beautiful girl called mm -hmm. Dawn, mm -hmm. she's one and a half now, mm -hmm. so it's been a journey, mm -hmm. but we are here. Uh, yeah. So, how did you first receive the news, you know, being, did you plan for it or did it just come? How did you take it? Because, you know, here in school when you get pregnant, some yeah. people think it's the end of life, yeah. some end up aborting, which is okay if it, that is what they think is fine. Yeah. And so, you personally, how did you take the news or you planned it? It was not planned, in all honesty, <laughs> but um, when I discovered the news, of course I was scared as a person, but according to who I am, the values that I've been brought with, you know, so I'm also a Christian, abortion was not an option for me, so I knew I'm going to have to keep this baby as much as I didn't know what it was about. I was scared, but that's the one thing I knew I was going to keep that child. So, how did you get over it? The, the, you being scared, how did you get over it? I can't say this. Because, because you know, pregnancy is not something you'll yeah. hide. Definitely, people yeah. were going to see it. So, how oh, were you so ready to face the world with it? Yeah, it was, first of all, I can tell someone out there, there's no getting over it in, in a one day at home, I'm sure you are so courageous it's mm -hmm. just giving yourself courage, each and every day because it took me a while between me realizing I'm pregnant and telling anyone else I first had to keep it for myself, you know, because of that being scared, but you take up the courage, you know yourself and you make that choice and you choose it a flow too, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So who was the first person that you brought this news to? I told uh, the father. That was the first person I ever told. The father of the baby? Yeah, because mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. So he was the first person I told. And he didn't receive the news well because he was also a student and at the same age as I am. Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, I'm not ready to be a dad. And me, I'm there, like, conflicting because I can't abort. Yeah, so it was of the idea you should abort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was not a choice that I wanted to make. So it was something that at a ilibidi, like, akubali, because I'm not going to abort. There's nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. But, um, so we conflicted at the time, and... But I was just ready to make that choice uh, by so, myself. So right now, is he a responsible father or he just accepted then he flew away? Um, we do keep in touch once in a while, but he's not around. I can't say he's around. Nearly too late. Once in a while, how's the baby? Just that show of concern, but not really much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've been by myself with my parents because the second person I told was my mom <laughs> and she was so welcoming you know they of course get disappointed but she was really nice to me you, she, yeah. yeah like a mother she was so like a mother to she me she was so motherly even mm -hmm. when she had like the, what the baby daddy's response was she was like don't worry I'm gonna be that person so she, she was your source yeah. of strength yeah oh so how have you been balancing now that you're like the full parent here. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you balance motherhood in studies? How do you navigate through it being you have to, you yeah. know, a baby, you have to breastfeed, you have to wash her clothes. You have to do a lot of things that is required of you. Yeah. On the other hand, you'll have to, you have to study. So how do you balance the two? Mm. 
through the pregnancy I was in school so I can say I'd already had that and a, a little bit of the experience because I used to go to class with the pregnancy and all of that and then having the baby now Nile, you know you are an adult and you, you, you arrange yourself, you know that you have to do this, you have school, you know you have to do it. So um, it's about planning. Any mm. girl out there can tell them it's about planning. Don't wait, don't think someone is going to do it for you. It's up to you. Plan for yourself. Exactly. Because you are a grown up and you are capable. As much as you feel like you're not, just know that you are capable. Mm -hmm. You know, I have class at this time. Mm. No, this, they might be a neighbor, there might be, um, there are normally day bags also, or just someone you can have live with you mm. to take care, to help you take care of that child. So this is not something you are not, sub it's something you're supposed to plan during your pregnancy. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be thinking about those things. Mm. When I give birth and I have this kid, what will I be doing about that? Don't just wait. Plan for it ahead. If you can get a relative from home, come and stay with you. If that's not possible, there are day bags out here who can Temunenda class na machia mtoto and then you you go to class. Mm -hmm. It's hard. But one thing about life, life is always going to be hard. But as long as you don't give up and you put the effort that's what matters so you don't normally feel bad that you have to take generally responsibility of this baby alone like you know most of ladies are so bitter <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> we true. say hey, bitter single mothers single yeah. mothers are very bitter so you don't always feel that bitterness inwardly no mm -hmm. no i don't it's one thing after your bitterness make choice if you sure. want to be bitter, you are going to be sure. bitter till the end of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be at peace. Exactly. Everyone needs peace. That baby of yours needs peace. Akuna jamtoto na nyanya maziwa chungu juu kona machungu miko. Just let go for your own sake. Mm -hmm. Let go for your own sake. Mm -hmm. One thing I always say, Mimi, the heart is mine. But there is nothing in this world that is new. Exactly. Nothing is new. Mm -hmm. So, learn how to cope. And the, the bitterness comes without forgiving. Forgive that person and let go. Mm -hmm. May I always say, if, even if that father of my child come, comes like 10 years later and they want to be there for their kid, you I just I allow them. never atini mm mkataze. -hmm. Because this baby is also not mine alone. And there are things about herself she might need from him that I cannot offer. Exactly. Yeah, so to be at peace. To be at peace is the best thing for yourself. And it's not easy. I'm not saying it as if it's easy because I had been through postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that was my next question. Yeah. <laughs> How did you get yourself off it? But first finish this one. Yeah, mm -hmm. so... I was through postpartum depression. I remember there was a time like the only thing I could be capable of doing is taking care of my child. Nothing else. Not going to class, not doing anything. That's the only strength I had. This baby taking because that is something I had decided in my heart. That I'm going to give do. my best for my child. Mm. So even if I'm down, I know I have to. This baby has to eat. This baby needs me happy and all of that. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. The stigma, the stigma around you being yeah. a mom mm -hmm. uh, in school. You know, you feel like you have disappointed your parents. Your parents. My grades went down because mm -hmm. I took my my when I took my exam for that semester I was I think two weeks pregnant mm. and I had been pregnant my last trimester and you can choke up with that term. So mm. my grades were down and pressure mm. So I was crazy, crazy, crazy postpartum. During that time did you have somebody who was helping you take care mm. of the baby? Mm, exactly what I was going through. Uh, going to say uh, I had this neighbor, she had a kid. I met her, I moved into that uh, apartment mm -hmm. and I met her there. She had a kid and we, we didn't speak because uh, she had never know, known me before. But I think because she had been in that situation before, yeah. she could relate. She could relate. So mm -hmm. she used to try and make friendship with me because mm. I was alone. 
this girl has moved into this apartment all alone she has no one so even when i went to give birth she was the one who took me to hospital she got me from hospital yeah. she was the one who took care of me before my mom came because she did throughout she used to encourage me and give me that hope and give me mm. the strength and equal then she'd come and we'd laugh i had very nice friends mm. my neighbors were very nice they'd mm. come and make me laugh and tell a story and i forget everything that i'm going through so having that someone is also important mm. and finding something that you can get your mind of these things because they're still you mm-hmm, yeah, you know sure. there's things you used to do before you had a kid don't stop them because you have this kid now that's killing yourself don't forget who you are if you used to sing go sing <laughs> if you used to do if you used to write go write whatever thing you used to do to get your mind of things do not forget that about yourself that's where you think more yeah, and more. Yeah, 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 more yeah do those things that you used to do show up if it's class just go exactly love smile don't worry mm-hmm. and eventually you will figure ah kumbe na kuwa poa kumbe na the things they used to overthink about i'm not overthinking about anymore yeah. i'm moving i'm moving i'm moving mm-hmm. so it just show up for yourself that's what i can say oh i love for, for your nine months you are here in school no i was around school uh, from i think six months from six we were from holiday mm-hmm. and then i came back now when now the pregnancy so was, in the third trimester yeah. uh, what one are chokanga sana unapata mm-hmm. mtu in class and then there are some people who normally differ yeah. so maybe you can encourage somebody you you know na e trauma and then people yeah, judge true, by the way how true. did you get through that um one thing mm-hmm. i always tell people about life go crazy live life as if you are a crazy person mm-hmm. Acha watu washangae kwani msana amechizi nini. And mm. cla- just go to class with that pregnancy. Don't give up. Don't worry about what anyone says. Mimi one thing about life I am pro choice. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to keep that baby then own up to your choice. Exactly. Be proud about that choice that you made. Mm-hmm. Cuz utamaliza shule, shule is only four years. And then you go out there be your own woman you will find out later on that you made the right choice even if you don't know at the moment you will find out mm. so be proud of the choice that you have made mm. i used to go to class and i'm like because <laughs> my pr- pregnancy is so big there's yeah, no comfortable yeah. position that i can sit, sit in mm. but you just still go yeah and you still listen to the leg and the leg the lecturers but they are very lenient people yeah. they understand mm. they can make the class shorter because you come on and you know yeah mm. yeah so that's what i can say um so right now how old is your girl is she still in school or um, like right now i left her at home because mm-hmm. i want to just have that without having those a lot of struggles because I'm now doing my 4.2. She's now a big girl. Yeah, she's one and a half. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So because I'm doing my 4.2 and there's normally a lot of challenges like finding someone to stay with that kid mm. is normally very difficult. That's one of the main reasons I left my kid at home because mm. you find this woman because I used to have a day bug and then all of a sudden they just don't come they are not picking your calls and mm-hmm. what not you know mm-hmm. and then so that whole struggle of it i was like i'd rather just have my baby somewhere where she's comfortable because my parents are very supportive actually they're the ones who are like just bring her until you finish school so how did yeah. you feel breaking the bond i mean going away from her now that you are close to her almost all your time and then you're going yeah. to leave her for some time loneliness. like how did you feel loneliness there mm. is no bond since mm. i was born mm. there is no bond like the bond between you and, and your another child. person mm-hmm. you know even you have a mother but the, your mother knows how much you mean to her more than you actually know mm-hmm. she means to you mm. so i was so lonely i i didn't know how long i was going to be and then the leaving the breastfeeding all those bonding things so you stopped breastfeeding yeah. when you're coming to school yeah. how did she deal with that 
Mm, uh, had, with your absence, kuwacha kunyonya, like I kumsumbua L twice and stuff. Okay, I had stopped breastfeeding her about two weeks before I came to school. Oh. Mm. Although she used to cry, mm. but unamzoeshe too. And then, like I used to call my mom and she's like, Aki, she's crying the whole night because you're not there and you, there's no meal, but you just, they'll just substitute with the other meal. Mm-hmm. But Anna Zoya, oh. yeah. So your absence, how did she deal with it? I call her every day. Every oh. day. There is no day that I don't talk to her. Over the phone? Over the phone, video mm-hmm. call. Okay, the, the physical absence. Of course. Uh-huh. Um, of course she feels it and I can't even know how much she feels it because exactly. I'm not mm. around ah. but she mm. has someone who cares for mm. her mm. Yeah. so I, I'm comfortable with that Oh, so your mother is the one taking care of her yeah. okay thank you so much so anything that you can tell a single mother out here any message you can tell that galu should I keep this pregnancy or not what what I say manini and stuff yeah so first of all, I'd like to uh, speak about mm-hmm. um, this group we have called Moms in School. Mm-hmm. It's a support group that we started around last year for mothers, young mothers who are also students. Because we figured you are alone when you are pregnant. But what if we have this society or group where one or two people can come and you feel like you are among your peers? So we have that for any girl out here when you're gonna, she's pregnant or she has a kid, you know there's a group called Moms in School, just ask around. We are there for you, we work with the school, we work with people outside the school for our own sake. And then for girls out here, first of all, I'd like to say Moms in School does not advocate for people to get pregnant. It is just a support group for those who are already there. And men know that they safe sex. If you need any sort of education about sex, there's always platform around the school. So don't let go of, of that. And then for that girl who is there and she has a kid and she has made that choice, be strong. You are a woman, be strong. Love yourself, love God, and love your kid. That's all I can say. Thank you so much, Frida, for coming to Anyango Brand Show. I thank you for the wisdom that you've used.